Greetings, Radio Nostalgia from Mars fans. As you, our loyal listeners, already know, our friends on Earth are examining all the possibilities for sabotage. changes to the planet and investigate the viability of regular returns. Great news for us all. We're hoping to go back on vacation to show our children what we so dearly cherish and miss. As of this episode, we have not yet heard from anyone back on Earth. They must be very busy with important research and are unable to reach out to our And you can blame them. Okay, enough chitter chatter. Let's get something on the floor. Yeah.
你的相爱之家，火星箭头的怀旧之旅。We meet here.
The Martian from the crash ship was different from you. He was alone, and he flew, and walked slowly. He would sit in one spot for a long time, and then curl up and sleep right there in the open. When I finally approached him, he didn't try to chase me. He took off his helmet and extended his open hand. So Charlie and I became friends. Charlie told me stories about Earth before the great ecological catastrophe, about his life in Alphaville, how he became a pilot for the mission to Mars. He didn't know anything about my mama. After years of guilt and sadness, Charlie felt he was finally home, although our mutant environment was slowly killing him. Charlie taught me to read, biology, medicine, physics, history, literature. I devoured it all. I taught him to hunt. He taught me about machines. Oh, he also told me not to eat humans. I showed him how to communicate with animals. We spent a lot of time in the Asa building, the place where his rocket launched during the evacuation to Mars. It brought up so many memories. Then one day, an old drone spotted us flying around and attacked us.
is beyond the space-time continuum. To me, come back, come back, come back, come back, yeah. come back, come back, to me. News of Charlie's departure has sent a shockwave through the city, and stories have been pouring in. Let's hear one now. I don't know what I'm doing up here on Mars, to be honest. Luck of the draw, I guess. I really didn't want to come, but my company insisted on one way to Mars. It was a single ticket to bribes for more seats didn't work, so I was forced to leave my family behind. That's awful. I would have preferred to go under the waves with my wife and kids, better than eking out a lonely existence in this hellhole. <laughs> the company no longer even exists. What a joke. I gave up everything to end up scrubbing air filters and crawling on my belly through endless ducts. We're not really allowed to talk about it, but a few of the ships didn't make it. And I often wish I was on one of those that fell back into the atmosphere and burned to cinders in the sky. Anyway, despite it all, I did find a new hobby of sorts crawling around below the city. I started messing about with the acoustics in the access tunnels. Some of them are miles long and just about any sound down there becomes beautiful and haunting. I'm no bad but I did find a new joy in singing to my kids. I feel the joy of me sometimes, peeking through my toolbox, asking question after question. What's this, Papa? Where do these go, Papa? What does this do, Papa? And I take them in my arms and sing to soothe them. Forgive my singing. I thought maybe I share a song with you. I grow weary singing to fading memories in the dark. Ah, kotki dwa, szaro bure obydwa. Nic nie będą robiły, tylko was bawiły. O, kotki dwa, szaro bure obydwa. Nic nie będą robiły, tylko was bawiły. Wow, powerful stuff. Loss is something we've all had to deal with in our own ways since we left billions behind on Earth to die. Grief is never easy to process, and we're no strangers to that hardship. That's just the way it is on Mars for now. But you can do your part to maintain and raise morale by keeping to your inner voice while traversing public spaces. Overly emotional outposts in public will soon earn a social demerit and a time out in the dome's outer shells to literally cool down. So if you're feeling overwhelmed or about to crack, crack open a tube of OMAS instead. Application has never tasted so good.
Two tracks back to back there, first emitting lullaby to float on by, and then taking things in a slightly different direction. End of an era EDM to soothe and uplift the soul. Speaking of soothing and uplifting the soul, an anonymous listener has kindly sent in a lullaby for us. So let's sit back, relax, and reminisce with you right here in Radio Nostalgia from Mars. Charlie, who seems to be roaming the ruins around Alphaville and uh, playing golf? It has been revealed that he has been severely depressed over the past few years whilst working as an Orinoco water delivery driver. We're hoping Charlie, who is a long-time listener of Arnathon, will reach out to us. So Charlie, this is for you. News of Charlie's departure has sent a shockwave for the city, and stories have been pouring in. Let's hear one now. Oh, I'm going to Mars. They will 
was a single ticket to right on more seats to the game. So I was forced to leave my family behind. That's all for me. I would have preferred to go like the games in my life in a cave. That would mean thinking now in the only existence of this hell. Crawling air filters and crawling on my belly through endless ducts. We are not really allowed to talk about it, but a few of the ships did make it. And I often wish I was on one of those that fell back into the atmosphere and burned to cinders in the sky. Anyway, in his final war, I did finally hold the soul crawling. I started messing about with the acoustics in the access tunnels. Some of them are miles long, and just about any sound down there becomes beautiful and haunting. I'm no Pavarotti, but I did find a new joy in singing to my kids. Oh! I feel that they're with me sometimes, peeking through my toolbox, asking question after question. What's this, Papa? Where do these go, Papa? What does this do, Papa? And I take them in my arms and sing to soothe them. Forgive my singing, but I thought maybe I'd share a song with you. I go away singing to fading memories in the dark. Ah, go Loss is something we've all had to deal with in our own ways since we left billions behind on Earth to die. Grief is never easy to process, and we're no strangers to that hardship. That's just the way it is on Mars for now. But you can do your part to make fire and raise morale by keeping to your inner voice while traversing public spaces. Overly emotional outbursts in public is too close to certain demands and a timeout in the domes after shells to literally cool down. So if you're feeling overwhelmed or about to crash, crash your thing to the point of this day. Vacation has never tasted so good.
Charlie told me you wouldn't leave for Mars before you caught us. Supplies were running low, and you were afraid to return to Mars without the captain. You'd face the Tesla City Tribunal. All dreams of promotion would vanish, and the riddle of my immunity would remain a mystery. But Charlie was growing pale and weak, so I hid him safely in Alphaville, and I ran back to your group to use myself as bait. You're tuned to Radio Nostalgia from Mars.
listening to Radio Nostalgia from Mars. Before we go on with the show again, the rumors of a feral kid playing in the ruins of Earth are pure fabrication, and any further dissemination of such misinformation is punishable by law under the newly formed Destabilization of Public Morale Act passed unanimously at an emergency Tesla City Board meeting two souls ago. Rumors aside, obviously the possibility of new life on Earth is exciting to us all. But don't forget that though the sun may be smaller from Mars than from Earth, it's still ours to cherish and enjoy. Grab a tube to your bone mess and live love to love life right here on Mars. to the floor, who could ask for more? You're tuned to Radio Nostalgia for Mars, music from the last day of the world.
It's humanity's calling card to make the best of a bad situation, and at no time in our history has this been more apparent than now. Adversity has always been a driver of innovation, and here on Mars we face that reality that we saw together. After the tech you can arrive up here and born out of the chaos back on Earth, so I guess you say the apocalypse was a good motivator. Humans will be survival plastic bags and the alligators to make the most of your time. The apocalypse is a good motivator. The coincidence that we are at the right distance from the sun is the reason we exist, so you might as well have some fun. This blue dot in vast space is where I drink my coffee plant away to be the place as a member of the human race. To watch the same juices flow, streaming in my mind from my optic. Beautiful rocking on the end of mankind. Humans will be survivor past the gods and the alligators to make the most of your time. The apocalypse is a good motivator. Humans will be survivor past the gods and the alligators to make the most of your time. The apocalypse is a good motivator. Apocalypse 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 motivator. The apocalypse motivator. Be attuned to the apocalypse motivator. Elated in spite of the apocalypse motivator. Times are tough and work is rough. Radio Nostalgia from Mars is here to while away the hours with music, stories, and memories from the good old days on Earth. Be safe, be kind. The future of mankind. Peace. Due to limited bandwidth, this transmission will repeat. Due to limited bandwidth, this transmission will repeat in 30 seconds. In 20 seconds. In 15 seconds.
for our trap. Charlie is here at the stadium, like a chieftain among the feral children of Alphaville. Earth doesn't belong to you, those who abandoned it, but to us, who grew up in the rubble you left behind. Do not return. This planet will not be colonized. It is not your playground, your lab, or your property. You will not take its resources to Mars. We, the barbaric orphans, will not be your tools for sustaining the futile experiment of your oxygen-deprived civilization on Mars. Do not come again in your spaceships, slugging your weak bodies in those silly suits. If we spot you again in these landscapes, we will devour you all. What you on Mars see as the post-apocalypse is now our home. The future of Earth belongs to us.